Hi guys, I'm back on here today. I want to talk to you about what I said yesterday. In the end of the video, I was telling you something about the plant. The meat base is better than the plant base as far as you're trying to eat something that's going to um, be more healthier for a protein. It's the meat that's healthier as a protein. But, um, you know, because people want to do vegan diet, the meat is healthy as a protein. Now, as far as fats, I do believe that sometimes you can use butter if you want, but I wouldn't be using it all the time. I would stick with a healthy, like an avocado or an olive oil type of a fat, but the meat is okay because you need it. You need to have healthy meat so that it takes a longer time uh, for the protein to actually work its way through the cell. Because like I told you, protein is going to heal your body. Now, I'm going to talk to you about something else because I have a lot of friends and they tell me about uh, how sugar affects them. You know, when you become of a certain age, you're not so much worried about eating a lot of sugar. Uh, and as at a younger age, people should not worry about sugar because sugar inside of the body can atrophy, atrophy or uh, cause the cells to become hard. It's almost like if you're like, I bake. So we add sugar on top of our foods, right? We add sugar on top of our bagels and not our bagels, but our uh, muffins and, and, and people add sugar on top of fruits and things like that. Sugar has an excellent taste, but glucose entering into the body from a mechanism that you've eating some type of a carb that you shouldn't have eaten, it is like adding crystals on top of your cells. And so now you become arthritic and you can't move and you're stiff because you have a bunch of sugar because you've eaten those donuts. You've had all that sugar in your coffee and all that different stuff. You don't want to do the, the no sugars coffee, you know, with just the flavor. You've got this extra sugar floating in your body. It's going to affect not only your blood, but the organs that the blood is transported to. It's going to affect every area of your body. This is why it causes the elevation of your blood pressure. This is why it causes the prediabetes. And it has gives you these eyesight issues and all types of issues because now you have an excess amount of sugar floating around because you want to eat like the kid, but you're not the kid anymore. You're an adult and adults have to eat like an adult. So what did the Bible say? When I was a child, I thought as a child, when I became an adult, I changed my thinking because my body is aging and my body is like, I got to take care of this old machine for it to survive me for the next 50 years or so. So I'm going to talk to you about something I do not want to talk about. I don't want to talk about this, but I'm going to have to bring it up. Because not only do men go through this, women women go through this, but men have a midlife crisis, or, or so to speak, until they get to be a certain age where it doesn't really matter anymore. But they do. Men go through midlife crisis as well. And some of them go through it in their 40s. Some of them go through it all, all the way up to in their 60s. And you're like, you're in your 60s. You, you almost 60. You're just having a midlife crisis. So it's crazy. So I'm going to tell you about this. This is what's, what's going on. I'm going to make sure I explain this to you the best way I can. Meat is the better protein. I already told you that because at the end of my video yesterday, I was kind of on the way to bed. During menopause, I want to just talk about these uh, these hormones because it's something I'm, I'm dealing with. During menopause, your estrogen declines. Women have estrogen in their blood, okay, all through their years. But this estrogen that you had was used every every time you had a cycle. You had these estrogen. You had all of this going on, but now you don't have all this going on. Your body is declining. The levels of your hormone is declining. Insulin is a hormone, just like estrogen is. So when estrogen decline, this elevates insulin levels, which controls glucose. 
So your estrogen went down, your insulin coming from your pancreas becomes elevated. And you can be in this elevated state quite often because you have no estrogen now. So your body has to depend on something. So you have an elevated insulin, right? Now, insulin is a hormone, just like estrogen. So when insulin hormone go up, sugar move out of the blood into your muscles and your liver, right? This all this is good if you're trying to gain fat or you're trying to gain weight for a skinny person. It's okay that they have sugar moving into their muscles and their liver. They have sugar, they have this glucose moving all over because they're trying to get fat. But for me, I'm trying to lose weight. So now I have an elevated insulin level because my estrogen has went down. You know, I'm not having cycles. I have no, the estrogen levels have depleted. So you have sugar moving into muscles, liver, into other parts of the body and coming out and excreting into other parts of the body that it shouldn't be. So this is not good. So the donuts, the bagels, the mochito, the sweet sugary breakfasts, all of these things, they are flowing into your blood now. This, this stuff is just going wild. So this is never ending insulin flow. Now it invites the stress hormone into your body called cortisol. You know, the fight or flight hormone is called cortisol. And if you have high elevated insulin levels constantly because you're eating a bad, poor diet, you're running around with sugary coffees and sugary donuts, you have an elevated cortisol level. So you're running around here in a fight or flight stage, like, whew, like you're scared or you're, and you're, 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 whew, whew, everything is high. Your blood pressure levels is high. You constantly, you know, you're in this state of fight or flight because cortisol is like when you're afraid, when somebody has scared you and you're like, oh, you know, so you're in a fight or flight stage. Your cortisol levels are es it's elevated all the time. Now, when cortisol is chronically high, more body fat is created. The fat sits, it sits. So managing insulin uptake is critical for keeping sugar control. This prevents diseases like diabetes and heart disease. So um, I'm going to tell you what to do. In order to manage your insulin uptake during the midlife time, during your 50, your late 40s into your 50s, which is what I'm going through, you have to exercise. Exercise like lifting weights and cardio, walking. That's why I tell you to make sure you get your walking in. Walking, if you walk through the house or jog, you can walk, you can jog, but you have to do some slight weight lifting or I do weight bearing against the body because the body is a heavy weight. If you can do weight bearing against your own body, you don't have to worry about buying a heavy set of weights. You're going to use your body as the weight. Okay, so you want to do cardio and you want to do weight lifting. These manage insulin response. 20 to 30 minutes of moderate walking or 15 minute jog, squats, rows, push ups, sit ups, sit ups in the chair, you know. Uh, then monitor your carb intake. A whole grain bagel is different from a regular bagel because it's going to take a longer time, just like protein takes a longer time to break down than carbs and fats. A whole grain substance, if you have to eat grain, is better than just a, a plain old uh, carb type thing. So if you're going to eat a bagel, make sure it's a whole grain bagel because it's going to take a longer time to get into your bloodstream and it the, the the sugar of the starch is accompanied by something that's going to buffer it and help it go through so it's not going straight out there into your uh organs uh disrupting things um stay off the sugar roller coaster uh there are two starches amylose and amylopectin 
um, the resistance starch is amylopectin because it digests fast. So if you have to have uh, bananas or mangoes, something like that, eat it when it's green because it's, when you wait till it get ripe, then it changes the composition of the starch and then it goes straight into your bloodstream. It's not going to even go through any type of mechanism. It's going to be digested fast right on out. And your body wants to get rid of these quick, fast uh, sugary starches, so it'll bring it out any kind of way it can. Um, a lot of times, men and women, they both, they're going to have a yeast, yeast buildup in their body. It's going to come out however it can. The yeast has to come out. It's going to come out on your skin cells. It'll come out in personal private areas. It'll come out any way it can, because what happens when sugar builds up in your blood system, yeast is a natural form of sugar that the body carries. But when you have it living all on your skin and coming out in various areas, you're eating a high carb sugar diet of poor carb. You're eating uh, the, the, the worst carb available, which is the white carb. So another thing too, let me talk to you about people that have to have uh, different things that you eat in your diet. The best thing to eat is a kidney bean, a black bean, a legume. Um, now, sunflower seeds and um, what these other seeds call pumpkin seeds, they're high in protein. Sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds are actually high in protein, so they're okay. Nuts is okay if you want to eat nuts. Um, kidney beans, black beans. If you must eat rice, which is a quick acting starch, try not to eat it. But if you have to eat a rice, add a nut with it or add olive oil or avocado or cheese. Never eat a rice alone. Accompany it, it with something. That's for any kind of rice, brown, white, anything. Add some nuts, some uh olive oil, avocado, cheese, add something with that rice to get that down. Now, rice and potato are high GI foods. They're going to go straight in your GI tract and come on out. So instead of eating that, eat quinoa, use bulgar, eat um, even oats. It's a high GI food. Oats is high. Now, if you have to eat an oat, eat it raw in its raw form. Don't cook it. When you cook it, it changes into a starchy substance. Just let it soak in a little water. If it's too hard for you to digest, let it soak in a little water. That's why you see people make the oats overnight. They let it soak in water and they eat them. You have to eat those oats raw if you're trying to get it as uh, some type of a nutrition for you or whatever, but I would just avoid it, um, you know, because I'm just avoiding starch, but I'm just trying to tell you what's good. Um, what else can I tell you about that? Yeah, cortisol is what causes us to have fat sitting because you have a low estrogen in your, in your, uh, in your reserves and the insulin is always high it's always high so if you're eating the wrong starch it's going to naturally dissolve the wrong way because you have a high amount of insulin hormone floating around you're going through the change of life so get the whole grain bagel if they don't have the whole grain bagel you're going in there to get your and don't go for them donuts because they're definitely going to come straight out as sugar they're going to come straight out however they can come out right through the system right through the gi they're not going to break down into anything um you know what i what i do i normally fast through breakfast and i eat lunch because i'm doing carnivore right now I'm worried about eating me some protein so I can build up and then I eat fats. I'm going to talk to you about fats on the next video. The best fat, butter is good and avocado is good. Olive oil is good. Coconut is good. But if you're eating a coconut, you have to get it in its rare form. You don't, you have to get um, 
what they call coconut milk that come from the coconut or the hard coconut, crack it open and eat it and cut you some pieces out. You have to get it just like that. That's organic. Now, if you're getting um, coconut oils, that's okay. Some people get that, but I feel like you don't know if this oil is real or if it's mixed with something. So get you some coconut milk or a pure coconut and crack it open and eat the pieces out. Coconut milk, you read it and make sure that it don't have no kind of crazy sugars on the can you know get you some good coconut milk and that could be a fat for you um i'm going to talk to you about some fats when i come back but stick with me we're still doing carnivore for a couple of months and then it's going to turn into what going to be a keto diet which is low no or low sugar no sugar for me you know, sometimes you may eat sugar in the form of a blueberry or a strawberry or a raspberry or, you know, some little fruit or something that you might want to put on your plain yogurt. But I'm not doing all that right now. Only thing I'm doing, if I need a probiotic, I use sauerkraut, I use pickle, and um, sometimes I drink me a little vinegar water in the morning and I, um, you know, eat the meats. I love cheese. I'm trying to not to eat a lot of cheese, but every now and then I'll buy me some cheese at the store. Uh, you know, I'm eating the bacon. I love bacon. I eat whatever I want. I lately have bought some pork chop. I normally don't even eat pork chop. I normally just eat beef and um, every now and then some chicken, but I'm just trying to learn a little bit of this and that, but I'm not a real big pork eater either. So, I'm not going to be buying a bunch of bacon. I might get me some sausage, uh, maybe some beef sausage next time I shop. I like to try some beef sausage or some uh, beef links or something like that. And, you know, I've been eating a lot of beef. I've been eating a lot of beef. Uh, I've been eating fish. But I haven't ate a lot of chicken. But, you know, I'll see what's going on in the grocery when it's time to shop. But I'm going to talk to you some more about fats. But having a declining estrogen level in your mid-50s is a little tricky because you really have to watch what you're doing. You can't be adding these sugars. You have to get that coffee black or you say, give me a flavor that's unsweetened. Now, if you're going to order out your coffee, it's really tricky because they're going to always give you some with some flavor that's sweet in it. And you don't know what the sugar is, you know. So it's best to make your coffees at home if you can, you know. But if you got to get it out, say, well, give me a black with just a little cinnamon in it. Cinnamon is, is really sweet in your coffee. If you get cinnamon sticks and let the cinnamon sticks sit in the coffee, it gives the coffee a sweet flavor. So I buy cinnamon sticks and I let it sit in my coffee and I use that heavy whipping cream. Sometimes I put butter in it every now and then just to give it a rich flavor. And uh, you can also use things like nutmeg. You can get uh, vanilla, just the flavor. Like if you're going to flavor a, 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 a baking that you're doing, Put the flavor itself in there, not the sweet, syrupy stuff that you find in a coffee section, you know, unless you want a sweet, syrupy sugar. But uh, I, I, I get the flavor from the seasoning aisle, and that's what I use in my coffee because it has no sweetener in it. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.